Technology! I'm so bad at it. <laughs> Sorry. For everybody who's had to endure, you know, three times of me trying to start up. <sighs> What's happening here? Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Say hi if you're here. Now I have six people here. Let's see. I have people in the blanket group. I have people on, on Betty McNitt. And... Do I have anybody on YouTube? Everybody probably got sick of trying to figure out what the heck I was doing and decided to go have dinner. So, hi, once again, I'm Betty McNitt. And I am here today to do the popsicle effect. If you're on YouTube, could you just say hi? Let me know you're there, cause uh, I'm not I'm not sure what's what's happening, and where are those comments at? I hear them. They make a little like noise in my software, but I don't see them. Where are they? There it is. Hi. Can pull it up on your phone, but not your iPad. I just think the machines are turning against us lately. It's it's I've had all kinds of connection issues on and off and Facebook's excuse me been weird and I use I use Restream to send my lives to all different places at once and I think you all remember a couple weeks ago it like wasn't going to Facebook but it was going to YouTube and then Sometimes it does go to YouTube, but not Facebook, and who knows? Anyways, popsicle effect, because we're getting ready for the challenge starting on Monday, and who is doing the six-day challenge? Who's starting a new blanket, and who is doing a, a, a working on a blanket in progress? And tell me what um, what striping effect you're on, which blanket you're planning to do, and which striping effect you are um, you're you're interested in doing or thinking about doing. I have a ton of yarn um, choices here because we're doing popsicle effect. So this is the most color changey ends weaving in of all the of all the effects the six ticket blanket effects so this is the one to do if you like changing colors on every row um, because that's what it does and it's actually a um it's a variation of the snowflake effect okay so um there's a there's your major color change between rows two and three and you want to go from the you want this color change to have two highly contrasting colors so i have white and dark purple hi barbara she says she's working on one now solid hunter green upper and lower edging snowflake cool um yeah so this you have your highest contrast in colors between um, row two and row three, just like snowflake effect, right? But it's what happens in between two, three, four, five, six, seven into the next two and the color change that makes it look, it gives it like a 3D effect. Now, I didn't come up with this. Y'all know me, I am a creature of habit and I do the Vivid Chevron lazy mixer i use cake yarn and i switch on five and seven <laughs> that's what i do i don't do i think the only time i've ever done a snowflake effect blanket is when i did the the baby girl blanket the baby blankets the nurturing fiber and i did those each in a different striping and um but i usually am a i'm a change on five and seven you know type of creature um 
a lady named Gina with a J, J E A N A Robertson, not Robertson, but Robertson, um, came up with this. So if you want more popsicle effect, search for her name. And then you'll find this. So the way she described it, and also we did, she's also the person that um, conceptualized the Six Day Kid blanket hat. And so when she did the Six Day Kid blanket hat, she did it in this striping too. So we have a Six Day Kid blanket hat that you can do anyway. And then we have the Popsicle Effect hat. So the Popsicle Effect is also described in the Popsicle hat pattern. Okay. So what she did, she called it a color smear. So she's going from dark to light or high um, contrast to, to low contrast. And I think that the, I think that the word is tone that, that, we're, that we're using here to um, create this smear effect. So, um, and what you would want to do when choosing your yarns to to see if this effect is going to you know ha come out with this visual you know pow pop you know that's why we called it popsicle it was like snowflake so we wanted it to be snowflake cold but it popped she made that row really pop so she gave called it the popsicle effect that's where the name came from but what you would do is when checking your colors is you take a photo of it turn it to black and white and if you see the the um the gradient of gray in your colors then your popsicle effect is going to be great so i when i did the pattern i gina had used colors from different brands of yarn to to get the right combination of colors so when i formally wrote up the design i went down to the lion brand outlet which is an, about an hour down the road from me and i just you know stood in front of their wall of vanna's choice and that was my color palette so i used vanna's choice to match the the colors that she did she used more of like a cranberry um but uh, and i think that the gray you know having the gray dark gray light gray and then uh, and then cream and then white is is really like miraculous and then that really dark um, high contrast color for the for row three okay but there's lots of variations so find your own find what you like and make that make it make a gradient right from and the highest contrast between rows two and three so here's one that I did here's another one that I did always the white is on the single crochet row and row two, row seven and two. Okay, and here's another one. And and these are all Vanna's choice. There's something about this one that this that doesn't make me happy. <laughs> and I think it's this little row of orange. Like I want more of that orange, so I don't know if maybe I would, if I were doing this as a blanket, I would continue that orange maybe into the double crochet row because I like it and then put this, this is actually like a mustard. I would put the mustard here and then maybe the cream for the single crochet and then the white or maybe get a, a lighter shade of cream, a more off-white or maybe not use white at all and go like orange and then into the cream and then red um so this there's something about this one i was really excited about these um really warm tones and then i think it's the white i think it's the white that i don't like so maybe a gray maybe a really light gray here instead of white maybe i'll try that maybe i'll try that right now so i'm gonna swatch for you um let's see what is this what it is this what I used? Yes, this is Brick. These are all Vanna's Choice because I love Lion Brand because they're they're right down the road. And um, and one time that one time I went down there and the owner came over and he walked me through the whole outlet and he did it on video. And we were on Facebook Live and then I put it on um, YouTube later and I was just like. 
you know, here's this, I've been using Vanna's Choice, making afghans out of Vanna White's books for, I don't know, my whole life practically. And here's the owner of this company. I was just like starstruck and they treated me really nice. Um, yeah, so then there's, there's this, which is rust. So brick, rust, and then this is the mustard. Yeah, that's the mustard. Oh, it's honey. I should put them where y'all can see them. And then what did I say? I didn't want to do the white. So I'm going to do a gray instead of that white. And then, no, not this gray. Not this gray. Maybe this. But I, I don't know what this is because it doesn't have a label on it. But I'm sure it's Vanna's Choice. It might be silver gray, I'm guessing. I'm guessing, okay. So there's my gradient. I got a new lens so I can't zoom in and out anymore. It's a fixed lens. So there's my gradient. But I think the lens looks better, don't you? I think the, it's, you can see more. All right, so we're gonna start with the lightest one. And that was the white that I did. I'm just gonna put that over to this side. And then I start with the, um, I'm gonna start with the lightest, this gray here. And I'm not doing a straight start today. I'm just gonna start the traditional way with 37 chains. I use a J hook. I have, I'll use the gold one because I guess Furls is not making these anymore. I think they sold them out. I got to notice that um, I'm an affiliate, so I got to notice that they were not going to be making them anymore. I actually think the gold, what do you think? Is the gold easier or harder to see? There's the gold and here's the silver. I, it seems like the silver is easier to see. Is it linen? No, it's 100% acrylic and it is um, it is a number four, what should we call worsted weight. Um, uh, that might be the old word for it, worsted weight or medium. It's a number four medium weight yarn and it's 100% acrylic. Um, the thing I really love about this yarn is it doesn't pill. It doesn't pill. I've used it on, um, on it's great for like kids, um, kids, I've used it for kids sweaters a lot and the afghan that you see on the back of my couch when I go live from my couch, the hexagon afghan is, um, Oh, the color linen. It may be. It may be. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, yeah, I think I was talking about Vanna's. For me, I love the colors and I love the first time I went to that outlet and um, you know, Mr. Blumenthal was like, this is every color of Vanna's Choice that we make. And I was just like, oh, it's just a designer's dream because you can go down there and you can see every single color, not on a little color card or a peg, but right there on the wall, you know, and you can put those skeins together. It's great. Twenty. Silver looks better. Okay. We have two people asking questions. So I asked if the silver looks better than the gold and they said yes. And then somebody asked me if the yarn was linen and I thought they meant linen as in fiber, but I think they meant the name of the color is linen. So that's what's going on. Two different questions going back and forth. And there's a delay too. So when you ask your question, 
I think I see it right away. I don't know how long it takes me to see it, but then there's a delay. Yeah, the silver is easier to see. I think so too, okay. Row one, we're gonna single crochet. So you're starting with your color that's, uh, somebody, somebody that knows color theory, tell me if I'm wrong. This is the lowest value. Is that what it means when there's, I know tone is like the amount of gray that's in that color. So we're going for, um, we're going for the li the lightest tone, the least amount of gray to the most amount of gray in the color. That's why I said to take a picture of it and convert it to black and white and it will show you just the gray. So we're gonna go for the one that shows up as the lightest and then work our way up to the one that's the darkest. And you want the high contrast color change between row two and three. So you want row two to be the brightest one. I don't even think bright is the right word. The, the lowest, the least amount of gray, and then row three to be the most. <laughs> I know it's mesmerizing, right? When I first started my channel, I, I did I had friends of mine who didn't crochet say they just watched it. They would just they were supporting my channel and they would turn it on on multiple devices to help me get my view hours up. But um, yeah, and they were like, "Your voice is so relaxing. It's so mess. My kids like watching you crochet." And then some of these said their child made a sixty kid blanket just from watching my videos, which was just crazy to me yeah I don't like this surface it's too shiny the surface of my table I was so proud of myself for putting the um, putting the contact paper on it and it's I see all these reflections now coming off of it because you have a, it, you don't realize how difficult it really is to make videos and how much light is on me right now it's really way more than you think <laughs> okay so now we're going to stay with this color for row two so chain the pattern says chain three but i chain four in order to alleviate my edges that have a tendency to curl and then we skip one two three you start counting with the one right under the turning chain three double crochet in the next stitch and then we skip two again three double crochet in the next stitch skip two three 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 in the top of the mountain I'm gonna make a mountain well there is no mountain yet but we're gonna do three, three, three in the next stitch and we're gonna make a mountain. See you later. Oops, anyone watching from YouTube? Let me see. Oh yeah, there you all are. Huh, okay. Hi, Linda. Linda's over on YouTube. Linda, Linda, Linda. Yeah, I had some connection problems. And Michelle's over there. Hi, Michelle. Lizbeth. Hey, Lizbeth. I think that the popsicle effect could be done with three colors. I think that the important thing is that you... Hey, Kelly. How are you? Um, I think the important thing about the, um, the popsicle effect is that you put the high contrast color change between two and three. So do a swatch and, and try it. One, two, three, four. Kelly is somebody I, I know, a, a, actually a knitting friend, right? Were we knitting together? 
we were doing you were part of that swatch swap I used to have this swap group called um, take it or leave it round robin and we would send a box of goodies around um, people would sign up and it, there would be a theme to the box and we would name them after hunky actors and we would send the box you know it would go in the, around to like 12 different people and you would take something out and put something in to the box and um, that was fun that was fun for a while the people were fantastic but sometimes the the boxes started out great but then they kind of went downhill people would take all the good stuff and then <laughs> put kind of junky stuff in but they were fun while they lasted and I made some great friends and um, some of the people that were in our group went on to become like yarn dyers and you know leave their day jobs and start businesses um, fiber arts businesses and that was long before Betty McNitt was you know had gone viral <laughs> oh brother I've been talking this whole time to you <laughs> to Kelly talking about our take it or leave it round robin group oh here I am I'm chatting and I'm not I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing okay so this blanket also has too many color changes to carry the yarn up the side so you do have to cut it every time you switch so this is row two now for row three I'm gonna go with my the highest contrast and I'm gonna work my way back down we had so much fun we had so much fun we did crazy goofy stuff and then we were somebody started talking about the um, the Easter peeps remember the Easter peeps and then that just became a whole thing where we were sending each other Easter or something about Easter peeps or we were talking about the peeps and blowing them up and in the microwave marshmallow peeps if you don't know that you can put a marshmallow peep in the microwave and psh, watch it if you've never done that go get some graham crackers and some marshmallow peeps or chicks or or whatever I mean Easter's coming right it's the end of January we'll have marshmallow peeps before you know it um, and uh, yeah you blow them you put them in the microwave for like a minute and and they they poof up really big it's fun and you put a little cracker put a little oh yeah you put this you put the toothpicks you give them each a toothpick and then you put them in the microwave and the first one that pokes the other one with the toothpick wins it's sword fighting okay so we're going on to row three and I'm using my most highly contrasting color which is the brick and I'm gonna do row three I have five colors somebody asked if you could do three and I would just say try it always swatch I don't know what the heck is going on with YouTube
<laughs> that's right. Kelly's saying, we sent some peeps to a girl in South Africa, and it took six weeks to get to her just so she could put them in the microwave. That's true. There were people on the in the in the group who had didn't know what we were talking about and didn't have access to the peeps and and didn't you know so we sent her some and then were we sending each other lighted crochet hooks YouTube is frozen I would I would like to if we were on zoom and not live broadcasting over the internet I would say some bad words but I'm going to um, I'm going to be good And then one of the girls would make that amigurumi. Was it an amigurumi? I think we had like a Johnny. We named them after celebrities. And we had like a Johnny Depp doll. I, I feel like it was an amigurumi doll that went around. And then we had the we had the doll. People taking pictures with the doll in all these different places. And it was so much fun. So now I'm going to, I'm going to switch to the, no, the orange. But remember I said that it was, let me bring this swatch back over here. Remember I said that I didn't like, I didn't like it because it wasn't enough. So should I just do one more single crochet row in the red and then switch to the rust for the double crochet row? Or should I switch to the rust and do the single crochet and the double crochet row? Because I want this row to be rust. Should I change or should I stay red for single crochet? Yeah, we took the dolls around where everywhere we lived and took pictures of them and stuff. That was so funny. I, I don't remember what happened, but some stuff happened that made me laugh so hard. I'm going to do a, the row, a row of single crochet. I'm going to stick with this brick and then for one more row. Nancy of Schmutzarella Yarns, that's right. She's probably still in business, right? I feel like she's doing really well. I haven't kept in touch with her. I just know that she got really busy after she started her business. She left her job and she started doing and there was another gal in the group and the two of them would have these dye parties where they would they would um, just come up with they'd have a theme like Harry Potter they'd watch a Harry Potter movie or something and then they'd come up with all these these yarn colorways and they would dye them um, so she'd have these like these Harry Potter themed yarns and I was just blown away by their ideas they were just full of ideas and they were you know they were just starting out they were making these great yarns it was really great it was fun and then it kind of it fizzled out it fizzled 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 for a while and then when my marriage got really bad, I just dropped off the face of the earth. I just stopped doing stuff. And every once in a while, somebody will pop back up in that group and be like, Hey, whatever happened here? This group was so fun. Now that I'm talking about it on a live, people are going to go join it, probably. <laughs> I want to do another take it or leave it round robin.
Okay. So that was row four. Not really following the sequence that Gina did. I'm doing my own thing, but remember what I said. The important thing is that you get the high contrast color change between these two rows. And then the next one in my sequence is the rust. So I really wanted more of the rust in my stripe, so I moved it up to the double crochet row this time. Hi, Alessia. I always change four to turn, even though the, um, the pattern says to chain three, but it does give the suggestion to chain four if your edges curl. And um, I suggest you always try it as written in your swatch and see how it works for you. Don't ever make a pattern alteration without trying it the way it's written first. And definitely don't make a pattern alteration until you read the entire pattern. Always before you start a pattern. Read the entire pattern before you start. Um, that will help you. One day I'm going to have, I'm going to teach a class um, for helping people read patterns. It's going to be called <laughs> Crochet Pattern Reading for People Who Can't Read Patterns. And then the first lesson is going to be read the whole pattern. Hi, hi Melbourne. V-Berry, that's right, V-Berry, Vanessa. Oh my goodness. She still does movie themed colorways and her fade collections are to die for. I need to get on to, um, Kelly, would you do me a favor and would you just drop those links in the, um, in the chat, links to their Etsy's and people, everybody go on over there and buy something from Smuts, Smutzarella and, um, and V Berry and um, tell them Betty McNitt sent you. Go on now. You're gonna need that fade yarn for the um, for the shawl, the scarf, the crescent scarf. I haven't been able to come up with a name for it. It's one of the I feel like one of the most important parts of designing is naming your design. Um, I haven't I haven't come up with just the right thing yet. It'll come to me. Thank you, Kelly. I also work the last stitch of every row from the back to the front. And when the last stitch of the row is a double crochet, I do an extended double crochet and I haven't added that to the pattern yet. It'll be in the new pattern, the, the new variation, the six day sweetheart blanket. That's gonna come out on February 1st. Patrons already have it, but I did add it to that pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna go on to the next row is going to be Honey. Honey. This is an another double crochet row, so I'm chaining four or three, depending on your tension. And then I'm skipping two and double crochet. V Berry on Etsy. Wow, they still use the same names. That was like, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago.
don't know why I'm coming in and out of focus so much tonight. Maybe I'm moving a little bit faster than I normally do. These would be great colors for fall, right? Really nice autumn colors. Kelly, is that you, Echoes in Time? What else do you sell on Etsy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to switch to this beige. So when I change colors, I pull the new color through the last two stitches, the last two loops of the previous stitch before where I want the color change to start. And I take the two tails and I flip them up over my working yarn and hold it to the back and I I don't want to say pull it tight because then people take that really to heart when I said that on a video there's a little bit of tension on there because what I want to happen is I want these guys to kind of lock in place so as they're flopping around while I'm finishing my blanket um, they aren't coming unraveled Right, and I did chain one, yes. Single crochet in the first and then skip one. I did, these are, um, this is Vanna's choice that I'm using and I did talk about all of them in the in the beginning of the video. So it's, and I, I'll, I'll show you, I'll pull the swatches back out again because we're gonna, we're gonna compare because the first swatch I did with these, I wasn't, it didn't make me happy, so <laughs> I changed a couple things, but this is the popsicle effect. And the gist of the popsicle effect is that you want to have your highest contrast, highest color contrast in between rows two and three. So it's actually a play on the snowflake effect. Um, but rather than having a solid stripe, you have a stripe that goes from dark to light and then quickly back to dark and it creates this kind of 3D effect. And I didn't come up with it, a lady named um, Gina, with a J, J-E-A-N-A, -A, Robertson um, did it and she, um, she pops in and out of our group. 
she's here and there. You can try tagging her if you have questions for her about the popsicle effect, but she just kind of bops in and out. Um, she'll be there for a while, then we won't hear from her for a while, and she's she's in and out, but she is part of our group still, and she came up with this. She conceptualized the Six Day Kid Blanket hat. Uh, she came up with that idea, how to do that, and um, she came up with this popsicle effect. This is her original. And Old Boiler Robo Glennis was the original Australian confetti. And to be honest, I don't know who did the snowflake effect first. And I don't know who did half snowflake effect. I give credit for that to Hanan, Hanan, Hanaway, who posted the photo on, she posted a photo of her half snowflake blanket on Instagram and it went viral and that's that's why we're all here right now <laughs> okay there's my swatch and here's what I have going now so I think I decided that I wanted to, to see more of this rust there wasn't enough of the rust for me because I, I like that color and I thought the white was just it just wasn't there's was something about it that wasn't making me happy so I did make a little shift and I kept the red for this row and then I switched her rust here and then I went to the um, honey and then I brought in the what is it beige okay and then instead of white I used this which somebody said they think the color is linen um, so what I'm noticing now is I only have, you know, my next row is going to be row two again. I'm going to go back to the linen, but technically I should have started this. I should have started my chain and my first single crochet row with the beige and not the linen. So this is why we swatch. This is why, because you discover things like this, like, because I made a change right here. I changed something so now my colors have all shifted up one row so this row this row here I should have started with this but now I know I'm just gonna keep going I can delete it later <laughs> um, echoes in time you die with ja oh that's right the Japanese indigo right um, you're in a lull right now saw a lot of your hand dyed yarn Antique bits and baubles. I didn't know you were dyeing yarn too. Wow. Is it okay if I ask you where you live now? You're not still. I mean, when I met you, we were both living in Northern Virginia. But I, I feel like I'm, I met you and your husband at that Ikea that time. And then I feel like you guys were moving not too long after that. You're getting ready to move. Y'all were military and my ex had just retired from the military, I think. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you. I'm inspired by my followers because a lot of the stuff I never would have thought up on my own. I never would have thought up this popsicle effect. Y'all know me. I am cake yarn all the way. Creature of habit. Changing on rows five and seven. Boring old vivid, che vivid chevrons. And I don't even snowflake effect. Only six day kid blanket followers would know what that meant. Right? Oh. 
I thought I remember um, oh wow so you've been since I've no met since we've met you've been to Japan and Alaska and now you're in Washington State incredible it's it's been well I this is 2021 I um, we moved there from Hawaii in 2008 and I feel like I was doing Ravelry stuff uh, until about 2010 2011 yeah my son graduated from high school and that's when it, I started like just falling out of a lot of stuff that I enjoyed it was around 2011 2011 to 2013 things were kind of getting bad and then 2014 I started getting sick my lipedema started to my lipedema progressed and I started to you know like lose my mobility and and all that and then 2015 my ex and I split and the next year I came up here I, I don't know what any of that has to do with that that's where I was. I dropped off the face of the earth for a couple of years there, but I'm back. I am back. And better than ever. I couldn't be happier. Oh, wow. Do you all ever get together? Kelly says she lives a couple of hours away from Nancy Smutzarella. How do you say that? Mozzarella, got it, thank you. You know, it would be fun to have y'all on a live sometime. We should do that. We should do a live. I'll go back in that group and see who's like... Well, well, yeah, that's true. Sometimes I forget we have COVID. But let's Zoom. I should post that in that old group. You should go in there and see who wants to Zoom. Bead markers. She was a good um, Karen. She's she's a good friend of mine. Her I haven't talked to her in forever. And her her kids were um, vi actually violin and viola students of mine. I lost track of them. That would be so fun. I'm not even talking about what I'm doing with the popsicle effect. I'm I'm going to continue my swatch to row four because the blanket ends on row four. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it repeats two through seven. And then once you get to the end of seven, you repeat two through four again. So it ends on row four. And so I'm doing three and four. I switched back to this um, brick color name of the color is brick I'll have to hit y'all up and um, have to do a zoom It'd be so fun Hi, Bev.
we can compare these two swatches and decide if I did it better this time. I already know that I prefer this. Um, it's not really even a gray. I don't know what you would call this color. When I picked it up, I said light silver gray, but it's not. It's warmer. It has it has yellow tones in it. Yellow undertones, maybe. Popsicle effect is about lining the colors up in a way, you know, you, you go from the darkest, the, the, the color with the least amount of gray in it, the lowest tone, the lightest tone. Somebody help me. I need, I need my daughter here. She's an, she's an artist and she's, oh my goodness. She has an amazing sense of color just amazing um she's an amazing artist uh but maybe i'll bring her on here and have her correct me <laughs> when i'm making some of these statements about um color i don't i don't know if tone and value are the same i thought value was about you know the type of color or maybe that's hue maybe hue and value are the same I, I don't know somebody help me I'm drowning here in my own ignorance um, yeah take a photo of your yarn and turn the saturation all the way down remove all the color from it until all you have is black and white and then line the yarns up in order from the least gray to the most gray and you want to start your blanket with row two you want that row to be the least gray and then you want row three to be the most and then you want to work your way back down and I give specific rows and colors for a couple different um, colorway is the closest to what Gina had created in her original blanket um, on the popsicle hat pattern but here I did it a little bit differently because just of the way these colors looked to me so don't let anyone ever tell you you're doing it wrong do it your way and you all can tell me if this makes a better pop this is it's why we call it the popsicle effect because we pop that color with the contrast okay so this will look 3d when you lay out the whole thing um, so this is here's the one from tonight and here's the original I don't know maybe that white maybe that white pops better I'll do it like this this might be why this is having a hard time focusing is because the cam camera doesn't like red. My daughter told me that. Here's my original. And here's the one I just did. So like squint your eyes and look at it. And then you want to see those, those, that granny row pop out. So when I look at this one, I think the pop effect is better. The white is really effective. And I, I think gray is really effective also to make it pop. Oh, this doesn't have any gray in it at all. This is just blue and white, but like squint your eyes at it and you can see like the pop of the white and then it like looks 3D. This one has the gray and the tan. And then I put it, I put a 
purple in here instead of what Gina used was a darker gray. And I put a purple in here instead. Yeah, so that pops a lot. It's the contrast between these two rows that really makes that white pop out. So by toning that down on mine, I don't think it pops as much, but I, the colors, I don't know, they, it makes me happier. <laughs> it makes me much happier. Okay, so there's the popsicle effect. So now you have you have pretty much the main um, the main uh, striping effects that we use. The only one we didn't talk about was double dip, and double dip is when you double up. But, um, I think she doubles up the double crochet rows and the granny rows, or one or the other. I don't remember exactly. It's Katie, K-A-Y-T-E-E -E, Chambers, the mod, who came, who does the double dip in some of her blankets. So that's the only one we haven't done, and um, I'll, I'll get to that one another time. We're going to write that one up. I'm not even 100% sure how it goes. I have to ask Katie how it goes, but it's basically doubling up some of the rows and these are the these are the main ones that people you know notice and ask for and that we do a lot but there are infinite ways that you can make and stripe this blanket it never gets old um, value is the lightness or darkness of a color is that the same as tone So would that be like if this red was really light it would be pink and then it, it would have a lower value I'm still I'm I'm not I'm not an, I wasn't an art major I was a dance major <laughs> and I was a business major before that so yeah oh and some other things that people do with their blankets are they add texture by only working into the back loop by working half double crochet instead of double crochet rows. Um, there's a way that um, I think it's Stephanie works a half double crochet row on row five and then works the single crochet row into the hey Glennis you're here good to see you um, works a she'll have to She'll have to come on and tell us about that. Works one of the rows into the third loop. I know Erin Boom has worked um, one of the double crochets as back post or front post or something like that. And so you can add texture. I mean, there's there are many, many ways to, to make this blanket. And there are more things to do than just what I showed you to do. Um, with the with the striping the different striping methods but now you have resources you have videos for each different stripe and you should be ready you should be swatching you should be getting your yarn this um this weekend and be ready to go on monday and if you want to start before then or you already have a blanket going it's no problem you can still do the um the uh, the um, the challenge with a blanket that you already have going. You just start on Monday and you just post a picture every day. And the challenge isn't about making a whole blanket in six days. It's about um, just having you know just incentive and crochet along um, camaraderie to keep you invested and in working on your blanket every day for six days. So I'll be live every day. Um, Glennis, do you want to come on with me on Monday? Excuse me. I still need um, mods to come on for a couple of days. Uh, appointments have been made, but there's still some openings. I'll, I'll talk to you guys about that in the chat. Somebody is saying tone is the particular quality of brightness, deepness, or hue of a tint or shade of color. Now, somebody is saying, I've always wanted to crochet one for my grandson, and I didn't know there were videos to help you. That is awesome. I want to learn how to crochet a six-day 
kid blanket, but my problem is I need to be shown how to do it step by step in videos. And I hope I can rewatch this from the beginning so I can learn right from the beginning. You don't have to watch this. You make, this is how you learn this blanket, okay? For anyone who says, I tried that blanket, I couldn't figure it out, I ended up with this or that, it didn't work out at the end of row two. Two or three years ago, I made row by row videos for you, okay? But you have to start with a swatch. Don't chain 205. And then when you get to the end of row two, and you want help and you show us the picture of row, the end of row two and why do I have too many chains going up? Why is my blanket going up instead of down? And the problem is over here somewhere and not here. So start with 37 chains and follow my YouTube videos. Um, the pattern, the written pattern is at BettyMcNitt.com. It's my signature pattern. So if you search Betty McNitt, Six Day Kid Blanket is the name of the blanket. Um, it will come up number one on Google, I'm sure. Um, so it's on my website. And there's a PDF. You can follow it. It's free on the website, or you can buy a PDF for $2 at the bottom of the page and have a clean one without any ads. The videos are on my YouTube, youtube.com, Betty McNitt, and I have a playlist where you can go row by row through the swatch, start with 37 chains, and I go really nice and slow for you and I explain everything. I didn't explain everything in this video. I was just showing the color changes, but in the, um, in, in the videos, I, I have a playlist and it's just only row one and that's the end of that video and then it goes on to row two and that's the end of that video okay so it's it's all separated out so you can if you get stuck you can go right to that row and then I have multiple swatch along videos like this one where I explain different ways that you can stripe the blanket because if depending on where you change colors you will have a different it'll look different okay so this this and they and the the different stripe rows have different names so this one we call the popsicle effect this one we call the half snowflake okay it's all seven rows in one color this is the swatch i did a couple days ago this is oh that's half snowflake again this one is snowflake. If they call it snowflake because it has all the textures and looks like a it looks like a snowflake because the grannies are popped out. Okay, it looks snowflakey. So you have choices. You can follow the original, or you can you know follow one of these other videos and decide where you're going to change colors. Use your swatch. Do what I did. Do it a bunch of different ways until you until you figure out which one you like the most okay what you like and listen I'm gonna tell you this and consider yourself warned first timers this blanket is addictive it's addictive you, nobody can make one <laughs> I want to find the person who has only made one six day kid blanket oh they're actually I don't because they're probably gonna come in and be mean and be like I don't like it <laughs> But we have, you know, we have a whole Facebook group and there's a lot of content there to help you get started. A lot of tips and tricks and people. Um, we have moderators from different sides of the world so you can get help pretty much any hour of the day or night. And lots of written um, instruction, tips and tricks, lots of links to different tutorials and and articles that will help you and on Monday we have a six-day challenge that you can join it takes place in our Facebook group and it's where we work together every day for six days and new people get help getting started we answer your questions and we get you going on your blanket and you might not finish it in six days but you will get it going in six days you'll have a good 
it's it's funny because the challenge is like the first day there's all this activity and the second day there's still activity people having questions people getting help and then by the third day it's just like I, they're, everyone's just sitting there crocheting and everyone's quiet because <laughs> you're flying once you get past these first couple of rows then you're good and the blanket just it's it, it comes together really quick that's why it's called the 68 blanket because you can make it really fast um, okay so I've been on here talking for over an hour and I had some missteps before this so I want to go delete all that stuff that's going to confuse people or get in the way or not be helpful um, that I did all the boo-boos the bloopers so um, maybe I'll pop up again this weekend live we'll see um, but for sure Monday I will see you all here live for the six day blanket challenge so get your hooks ready get your yarn ready get your swatch made and be ready to chain with me on monday and i'll see you all then or maybe before thank you for being here don't forget to subscribe and click whatever for notifications so that you will be notified when i am live and you will never ever miss me all right thank you everybody and I hope to see you soon. Bye now. This looks really good. I like this. I might make a whole blanket of this.